brother man In every nation in the Caribbean We suffering down in the Caribbean And it's all because of stinking oppression Repressive education For a chosen few So many brothers on the corner Cause no school to go No work to do Crying sin kicks Be crying this In Antigua Dominica Oppressors Leave we alone Oppressors Come off the bone Share the life, share the life
Oppressors. 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 Yeah, the live show, the live. Good evening, folks. I'm DJ Maurice, and I'm coming to you live and direct from the Gaza here in the Boogie Down Bronx. As the song say, the man Beckett said the oppression continues there in our beloved federation, but more so in the sister island of Queen City, Nevis. We're having all kind of dribbling thing going on there with Baby Brantley. Numbers changing automatically and all kind of thing. See, like his smartphone is a bit too smart for him. He might have a smart calculator as well. But this evening we're going to talk the things and chat the things, you know, that, you know, we're going to do with things here. The weather here in New York is not too bad outside. The temperature is somewhere, I guess, in the 50s. Sun is out. You cannot feel the sun, but you can see it, you know. You know, they say, I want to see the sun shine again. Good evening, brother. Um, Livingston Brown, everything good with you? Livingston Brown, the man next man. How about Sister Beverly Marisha? Gwyneth Marisha, my mascot there, Dorothy Allen. Sister Hazel Claxton, Sister Naomi Ward. The oppression continues, and we're going to be chatting the things in this evening. But, you know, as we continue to um, bring things to the general public, I have, have to uh, big up our AJ day. I understand he is in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, that's some seminar there to deal with um, the electoral reform and, his, and stuff like that that he's working on in the Federation of St. Kitts Navis. So for all you folks there in the Federation of St. Kitts Navis who are anxiously awaiting um, some electoral reform, it's, it's on its way, it, it, it's working, it, you know, he's working on it. So just big up the, our honorable AG for doing his thing. You know, um, we're gonna drop, um, a track here. I want to drop this track by my, my good friend here, Brother Vantapool, the man Ranger, the Lord Ranger. He got a, a track there that I just love this track. And in times like these with what we are dealing with in our Bill of Federation, I think it's only natural that we play a bit more of these songs because these um these uh, artists back in the days, they was very um, fluent with their um, writings. They basically was representing the people that cannot speak for themselves and had no problem doing so to their music. You know, we have some Calypsonian today. They sing for the supper. They sing whatever the politician them tell them to sing. And they forget. Um, why God give them that talent to um, represent the people who cannot represent themselves. So I really, um, this evening, I am here with a heavy heart with what I'm hearing taking place in the Federation of St. Kitts Nevis with the um, killing and stuff like that. So um, I just want to drop this track for the folks there in the Federation of St. Kitts Nevis. This one is coming um, by way of um sandy point coming from our brother there the lord ranger brother vanterpool and i just love this track so stand by for the music as we get into our conversation this evening Look around everywhere in confusion In our small island, even at United Nations Our leaders, oh yes, I'm afraid to say Taking us closer to destruction every day Oh yes, corruption, breeding corruption is the talk all about Dissatisfaction in government and policies is a common shout. Hatred, envy, and spite, I see, has now become the order of the day. Oh, yes, 
Well, look, the forces of evil acting today, trying to get us down in every way. So we got to stand up for what is right. That's right. Drive evil deeds from the darkness unto the light. And William, let's pray for the land. Walk hand in hand. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Collectively pray everyone and work with a plan. Let me drive all evil deeds from the land. Right around here in our country There are ten situations you can clearly see Opposition opposing every move government be Opposing everything just for opposition say We see a system where our people slowly the right to think and most of all the freedom to choose In a regrettably so-called tourist industry Workers are fired without warning, without mercy So you see, hungry mothers with their children to feed Trying desperately to fulfill their needs A high price of survival we have to pay Oh yes, evil force is increasing every day And William, let's pray for the land Walk hand in hand A house divided against itself cannot stand Collectively pray everyone And work with a plan Let me drive all evil deeds from the land Syria and Afghanistan In South Africa victimization and oppression Remember Grenada just the other day A military janta destroy all that stood in its way Oh yes, the world is standing on the brink of disaster And may well soon end If our hungry leaders continue Along this trend To pressurize people To satisfy their selfish needs Holding on to power At the expense of those they bleed We pray that the forces of evil Now stand in our way Creating heavier burdens every day May very soon diminish From our sight That's right Bringing brightness where there was There was night Come, come, pastors, pray for the land. Walk hand in hand. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Collectively pray, everyone, and work with a plan. Let me drive all evil deeds from the land. Come, come, pastors, pray for the land. Walk hand in hand. A house divided against itself cannot stand Collectively pray everyone And work with a plan Let me drive all evil deeds from the land Yes, sounds of the man Jerome Vanderpool, A.K.A. the Lord Ranger Out of Esperia in St. Kitts By way of Anguilla now living in the UK And those sounds were so appropriate for back in the days because this nature of um crime that is taking place in the federation this is not us this is this is not kitchen inhibitions you understand there is something that is happening there something more than just peace money there's something that i am missing that 
we just have to understand and get a handle of because for the life of me if you're not getting monies from somewhere which i don't think this is the case so you're going to go and kill a brother or a sister that don't give you the money so that does not add up there's something going on in our bill of federation that we need to deal with and we're going to talk the things then this evening you know we're going to talk the things then this evening because if we don't talk the things them people are going to sit back and think it's okay you know and we know we have a bunch of folks out there trying to blame everything on the new um labor administration that just took office some um seven plus months ago while you had a team of folks there um the team unity concussion concoction with the um uh, farmer hog there with the um uh, Pam, People's Action Movement, led by Sean, and the CCM, led by the baby Brantley there. They was a part of the issue. For seven years, they created something that is beyond me, which we're going to have to get rid of. You know, we try to get rid of them, but something gets stuck there in Nevis. We're going to work on that. Let me say good evening to um, some folks here online. G. Williams, how are you doing? G. Williams Keith, delicious Nicholas Brown, how are you doing? Larita Clark. Willie, Omen, Farrell, Kelvin Wilkin, Ivor, the band Henry, how are things doing? Petrina Ballot, how about Livy Brown? Everything good? Also, want to big up um, the man Taffy, <laughs> Sister Angela Weeks, how are we doing? My friend there, my village lady. Uh, the man Thaddeus Deposua, how are you doing? Monica Brown, Eugene Weeks. Ruby Walters, how are you doing? Good evening. George Minisbit, my brother, you're someplace around the globe, I understand. I hope all is well with you and your family. Um, Sister Paul Francis, how are you doing? All is well. Hope all is well with you. I want to big up Sister Glo Joseph Glassford, how are you doing? The man, Lord Kent. Debbie, you know, um, as we speak this evening, we are celebrating, we are not celebrating, but we're actually uh, mourning the, the, the death of a very good friend of mine out of Antigua by way of St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, an ardent cricketer. This man is the father of cricket in the Virgin Islands. I've done a lot for cricket. He passed away two Sundays ago. I just found out this past Sunday from his wife, Miss Clyde Jarvis, of his passing. So the funeral is set for the 19th of April on St. Croix. We will be bringing you much more information as soon as the venue is forwarded to me, but the date of the funeral is already set for um, April 19th in St. Croix. So I look forward to my boy, the man, the main dean, one of the former presidents of the Cricket Association in St. Croix as well, and the Veterans Cricket Association. At some point next week, I'll try to see if I can bring him in, if not next week, prior to the funeral, that he can have a chit chat with me and give us some update and uh and brother um macarthur jarvis some call him tyson as a pet name but um very good friend very nice gentleman we were like brothers we were like friends we were very good friends like brothers he was like a father to me when it comes to cricket anything of cricket he always makes sure he sent across to me here to new york that can have my souvenirs as a matter of fact he was responsible for the operation of the Sun for 2020 in St. Croix. And after that first tournament, he made sure he sent me a replica, one of the bats that was used by a fellow Kittishan there from Newtown, Brother Huggins. He was uh, one of the open batsmen and make sure he sent me um, that bat so that I can have something to show that Brother Huggins made a few runs. Want to big up my boy, Brother Eustace Hendrickson. How are you doing? How is the folks there in the Houston area? Want to big up Clayton Davis. How about um, Gemini, Gemini Nisbet? Everything good with you? Everything cool? Want to big up Ivan Jeffers. How is the UK? How is What is the weather there? What time is it in the UK? You know, I'm going to drop one more track here because the world is in a mess. And um, good evening, um, Jason Hazel, Annette Morton, my good friend here, brother Jeff Pemberton, the man Mikey Slack, Moffat Slack, how are we doing, the man Carbo. Don't forget to drop something in the, um, 
in the chat there about your place to Navy so where the folks can get their goat water and fish. You know, I want to big up the man Elvin Ellie. I guess he is sleeping at the moment, but eventually he will wake up and join us and chat, um, jump in. But uh, Elvin Ellie has been working very hard these days, um, doing the best he can do for the sister island of Nevis there. A lot of work's taking place behind the scene with brother Elvin Ellie. So I want to thank that brother for all of his hard work. I also want to say a good afternoon, good evening to Sister Janice Daniel Hodge. How about Sister Patty? Pat, Patricia Bartlett, uh, Emmanuel Annals, JD Keynes, and Kudia, and the other neighbors. Let me drop this one more track here by Brother Ranger, the world in turmoil, and then we go straight into talking the things. My kick it off this evening with Brother Dwyer Astafan. Do I have a very powerful um, message for us again today? And we go straight into talking the things because, you know, we're hearing about our kind of resignation from the PLP. People are now saying they did not know. Things have changed. Nothing changed, you know. What is going on today with the PLP? Nothing has changed. As a matter of fact, I might just go back to my original um, programming back in 2020. I might bring up some, some clips here when I first entered the Federation following the COVID, the opening of the borders, my interview on Win FM, my interview at the Freedom FM, my chat with uh, my brother there, Sakoti, where he told me to haul my ass. I mean, we have some clips. So I might just blast from the past and make people understand. When you all hear them coming now about things change and morals and direction, not a thing change. The only thing change is that the farmer had his out of office and they can't use the, the government purse as a slush fund anymore. So everybody trying to find their conscience all of a sudden. But we're going to deal with that. Stand by for the um, track from my boy, the Lord Ranger. We are really paying all them superpowers stocking nuclear weapons while hungry children dying out from malnutrition. Mankind has What about ideology? It cost over two and it might cost three Look in the annals of history Too many bloodshed throughout the century Remember Stalin and Adolf Hitler The ideology caused plenty murder Remember Stalin and Adolf Hitler Ideology caused mass murder and confusion Some parents neglecting their children 
Because there's no food, no shelter, no place to put them. Because of the pressure of life, mankind forced to take the whole life. In this troubled world, the suicide rate is out of control. Children getting children, Lord, we going insane. The crack and cocaine messing up the young people's brain. Injecting the needle all in the veins. The love that we had is surely twisting on down the drain. Come, my people, rise. You better recognize we need Caribbean unity to tackle the plague that comes from we. We must come as one feather, pull our resources and go further to fight AIDS, cancer, blood pressure. Poverty, crime, drug, hate and murder Caribbean leaders come as one You got to start to find solution Caribbean leaders come as one Together you can save the Caribbean land That's the song of the Lord Ranger, Brother Ranger, Brother Van Tepool. You know, this afternoon, this evening, as I said, I came here with heavy heart. And why my heart is so heavy is because of what I'm hearing taking place in our beloved Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. A double murder and the early morning of Saturday morning last week. Folks in a yard playing cards, playing dominoes, whatever, getting shot up. Does not make sense. This is not the same Christian Nevis that I know. I understand there was another um, shooting there, um, I guess Monday evening, whenever over in the Magnet area. I mean, these kind of wars, we need to turn away with it. There is no extra life out there put down any place that you can replace. It's not like a car tire where you can replace life. We got to done away with this nonsense. We could do better for our community other than killing. The, the cemeteries out there, the graveyard, are not refusing anyone, you know. They're not refusing anyone. And we have to go there eventually. So there's no need to rush, to rush to get there. 
And we got to blame our leaders for a lot of these things that is happening. Because the people look at you leaders, continue to commit crime after crime, whether it's white color, blue color, or red color. Crime is crime, and you all won't get away with it. And since you all up there at the top, dealing with the big crime, they're down there trying to survive. And it's only one way they know to do it is to kill each other to survive. Like the crab in the barrel mentality. That is what I'm saying. You know, over the weekend, we had the inter primary schools um, sports they understand in St. Kitts at the King Collins Stadium. As usual, is a um, celebration time for St. Kitts and Nevis. And for the life of me, I don't understand why our petition and division, both at home and in the diaspora, is so misguided. And why is so misguided with all the big things to talk about in the Federation, especially over there in Nevis? The problem at the Van Samuel Airport, with whatever deal is going on there, the people of Nevis, the people of St. Kitts do not know what deal is going on there. And they have a right to know. No kind of arrangement should be made with any foreign investors at the Vance Emory Airport without the people knowing what they're getting into. We heard the story before that Nevis, um, the NIA and its own cannot make certain decisions. Even in the recent case of the electoral um, matter there between the NRP and the CCM, you all see who was representing them. The, AG had to represent the country. So if the NIA cannot be sued by anyone or anyone cannot sue them without the involvement of the federal government, the federal cabinet, why is it Baby Brantley and his team out there negotiating and doing all kind of nonsense with people to get all of us in problem? Because believe it or not, whether you live and see Nevis or St. Kitts, Whatever goes down federally, all of us, all of us will be culpable for that. Taxpayers' dollar have to deal with that. So you all in St. Kitts, like my good boy Dwyer Astafan and Sam Kanda and them, that's saying that's a Nevis problem and not getting involved. Federal funds is going over there. It's our federal funds, St. Kitts, Nevis money, paying these bills when the time comes to go to court to fight with these foreigners. So it's time enough that my partner, dear Sam Kanda, my brother, Dwyer Astafan, my boy, dear Larry Vaughan, Ira McMahon, Dr. Martin, the big lights, the talk puppy, Douglas Watley, the big JL. It's time enough that you all start paying attention to what's going on in Nevis. Because whatever happened over there will affect us. I say all of that to say this, I see, some supporters, whether they're labor, labor supporters, or NRP supporters, or anti baby brand, they don't know who they are. But you all have to pick your all fights. I see you all all up in an uproar because baby Brantley take a picture with his, with his main squeeze. I mean, a picture might tell a thousand words, but it's a picture. You understand? If they want to dress up in the nice dandan clothes and go to birthday party and go to um, sports day or whatever the case might be, let them enjoy that. That is their right. They want to hug up and make love and kiss in town. That is their right. Why are you all making that an issue? That is a non-issue for me. The issue I want you all to pay attention to is what's happening at the Van Samuel Airport. What is happening at the Alexandria Hospital where the expansion ring has been built? Those funds that cannot be accounted for and the fabrication of funds, the fabrication of receipts that does not exist, the fake hacking to try and hide whatever is going on. These are the things I want you all to pay attention to. Do not be distracted. DJ Marisha will not be distracted from the mission. We got baby Brantley. You know, when you hook a bass in the mouth, if, you, if you're familiar with fishing, when you hook a fish in the mouth and it's too big and it's fighting you, 
You don't have to fight it, you know. You just tie the line on a buoy and throw the buoy overboard and lay rest yourself. Let fight yourself until you're tired. Because when it's tired, you're going to really mean, you know. That is how you fight them bass fish there. You see how we mouth look? That's a bass fish. Let him carry on and profile and dress up and wear his nice dandan and his nice shoes and all of this thing. Let them enjoy themselves. If you all pay attention to how much nice clothes Van Samuel had, you know. A lot of nice clothes Rock had, you know. A lot of people had nice clothes, you know. And when they hit the pavement, when they end up on the block of ice, they didn't go with all them nice clothes. They went either in the hole with one suit, or they went in the furnace and the suit and the back get burned with them. No matter how much nice dandan they have, do not worry about the dressing up. Do not worry about Dr. Joe and his cabinet going to Nevis to celebrate. One minute you are complaining, Dr. Joe not going across to Nevis. Next thing you are complaining, he got Nevis to a party. Well, if all you want him come to all your party, keep a party too now. Keep a party too and invite him. And if he don't show up, you have more to drink and more to eat. But don't let this petty stuff sidetrack you all from the real deal. I want you fellow petition and divisions to stay focused on what's going on at the Van Samuel Airport. We need to know. The Freedom of Information Act is there, let's utilize it. The good governance agenda that was passed recently, we want you to utilize it. Let them dress up, let them hug up, let them dance. Let them have the fun. Let's focus on the agenda. The agenda is to save Nevis. We already take St. Kitts back from the jaws of the criminals. The criminals that has on the white collar. The white collar criminals is worse for the Federation of St. Kitts Nevis than the little boys and walking the street shooting up each other, you know. One death is too much, yes. But you all look at what have happened over the past seven years. Look at the amount of millions that gone missing and millions still unaccounted for. Let's focus on the main agenda and divisions. Let's focus on the main agenda petitions. You know, I keep getting calls every Friday from various people about what's going on on groundings. And I do not know if the big JL will want me to join him one of these Friday to put an end to this thing because it comes a point in life where when ignorance is taking over the place, you as the media outlet, whether it's radio, television, or social media, you got to put a stop to it, you know. Because these sore losers, these fake profilers, these parties that has done the damage to the Federation and knows that when the investigation come, is completed, many of them, their families and friends, will be held accountable. They're going to continue to spread their false news, to try and put people against our good up attorney general. Why is it there's still something in the media talking about the attorney general and his social security and his nanny? That matter was resolved. That matter did not go to court. Social Security did not take the AG to court. There is no discussion on that. That's a non-starter that should be done away with. People talking about marching and street. March and street for what? When you all had one family and friends mashing up the country, locking up innocent people, tear guessing innocent people, where were you all? Where were you all to come and march on the street? All of a sudden, you all got shoes, you all got feet. I heard someone speaking um, last week, and that's what caught my attention, you know. And I'm hoping it's not Ava that was speaking that way. Because Ava marched with me during the get rid of them campaign in a wheelchair. I remember her and another gentleman that was in the wheelchair. And I know they're sensible people. And Ava cannot be entertaining them kind of conversation there if it's her about ag resign and all this nonsense 
whatever went on with the AG was resolved. If this and if that you are talking about, well, if we were to check on everybody who ran for part election in St. Navis, you I would not have no politician down there. You know? Not even Marisha could have run for a politician, you know, because Marisha hands ain't clean, you know. Marisha used to break in. Marisha used to get coconut from my grandmother and from my, my auntie and them. So this thing about the age you should resign. You know, I went searching after I heard that nonsense on Friday and on Freedom FM. I went searching because I keep referring to it. I keep referring to it. And I did I I forgot I had left the information in St. Kitts. But there was actually a case that Social Security sued one of the candidates of the PLP, one Stasio Williams, that ran for the PLP, the then Prime Minister Party in Sandy Point in constituency number five against Sean Richards for the People's Action Movement and Kenny Douglas for the Labour Party. It was three people that ran in Sandy Point. And the PLP candidate that ran in Sandy Point was running under the PLP. And at that time, his government was in power. Well, if your government is in power and you are running as a candidate and your government who is in charge of the Social Security Board, have you in court for lack of payment for your workers in excess of some $300,000? Not one nanny, not one nanny, not a couple of dollars in excess of $300. How bad can you be? Where was these people? Where was the patch up fellow? Where were Baby Brantley? Where was Sean Richards? Where was the people who is calling now for the AG's neck? I got the document in front of me now. The date of the hearing was scheduled for 7 18 2020 at 8 a.m. at the magistrate court. July 18th, just weeks before the federal election, he was running as a candidate just weeks before the election he was running for the plp party saying his nevis federal elections was on the 5th of august 2022 this thing came to light days before the elections right before the case to be heard in court Poof, they said somebody came and paid the bill. 300 plus thousand dollars paid up for a candidate that is running on the PLP. Did I wonder where the money come from? Did I wonder if it was taxpayers money paid that 300 plus? Do you all wonder if it was just a write-off and it was not paid off because there was a directive? You all know that there were some directing fellas working at the Social Security doing the work of the then farmer hub has an added done at the Social Security board to find out where all this money disappeared from Social Security during the last seven years. You all recall when the representative for number eight for the PAM party, Eugene Hamilton, who then became Deputy Prime Minister, after the farmer had fired the famous six, you all remember he said that the monies that was allocated was done for 24 house, houses. He only said 22. He wanted to know where the other two gone, two houses disappear. You all remember all of these things during the campaign? Well, let me tell you all something. If you all want to go and check, about social security. Let's start with this one. God Wilkin, the current AG, he is not a candidate. He's not a politician. He's not in um, parliament as an elected member. 
he's there as the appointed attorney general and he's doing a good job. And I'm gonna to continue to support him until such time as he stop. And I will ask through this medium and whenever opportunity I get of the prime minister and his cabinet and the people of the Federation at large to support the AG because there's more to it than meet the eyes. Somebody don't want the wind blow. You know what they say about the wind when they blow, what happened to the fall bottom? There's a lot of faces out there in St. Kitts Nevis. When this wind finally blow and the charges start coming down, you are going to be surprised of some of the people that was benefiting. You all see people resigning left, right, and center from the PLP. I guarantee you this fellow, Stasio. If he resigned from the PLP, he will surprise me. Because for that money to be paid to social days before the case, that the case was canceled, you got to be you got to be loyal to somebody for that. The court matter, you know. The index number for this matter is 31 dash SKB MCV. 2021 slash 0406. That's a real case number. Anybody could have access to it. It was on the wall. It was on the board. Anybody could have walked into the courthouse and, 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 and say, take a, a, um, a snapshot of it. This was in the domain of the public weeks, days before the September 5th election. I hear no crowd from nobody, not from the patch up fellow. Not from Baby Brantley, not from Sean, not from none of them running, not even Kenny, Kenny Douglas, I think, who used this in his campaign. The Labour campaign was so mild, they're not playing a dirty campaign. They was like sitting back like in Sunday school. They talk the things, but they don't really attack the, the way that I would have liked to see them attack. So, when these investigations finish, you know, when they finish, there's a lot of headache. There's a lot of, currently, there's a lot of uncomfortable people that is in our beloved Federation of Sinkies and Nevis. Because 20 plus million dollars can't walk out of a bank on its own. Somebody had to take it out. 20 plus millions disappear from a development bank could not came out on its own. Someone had to take it out. And I don't believe it was one person. There was help in this regard. There had to be help in this regard. I look at the operation during my time there at the um, electoral office on Central Street with the man Capital. And I spoke about it then, and you guys heard the Prime Minister speak about these fake marriages. And I've said weeks upon weeks again ago, those fake marriages was not just in St. Kitts. It was in St. Kitts and Nevis. And Larry Vaughan, who was the Labour um, person there at the electoral office, reported that was a great deal of um, Panky panky going on with these foreigners registering in three constituencies and St. Kitts and one and Nevis, mainly Charlestown. When these events investigation finally finish, you guys are gonna find out that the election was not decided by the voters, nationals of St. Kitts and Nevis. If we was not so forceful in St. Kitts. I spoke about this a few weeks back. If we were not so forceful, they had things so organized in St. Kitts that they even relocate polling stations where they had people hiding out in houses to infiltrate them into the system to come and vote. But because of soldiers of Big Steve, man like Curtis Cook, Dwyer Astafan, Sam Panda, myself, and many others, some of the names I can't even remember. If it wasn't for us, 
police in the area and ensuring that these people does not get into that line, Marsha Henderson would not be um, elected today. I don't think so. Because they had enough people to counter them. It was a lot of work to keep them out the line. And when they realized that things could not happen, I, I don't know how true it is, but according to Dwyer and those guys and Sam and them, that's the latest um, polling in that area ever stay open. 10, 10, 10, 30 people still voting because they tried to shut down the polling station before everybody votes. And Dwyer, the militant person as he is, you all hear Dwyer, Dwyer called me troublemaker, but Dwyer was that mean? Is Dwyer teach me? Dwyer took on those regional observers when they tried to shut down the line, when he asked a question and the same polling crows at whatever time. Dwyer said, no, that cannot happen. Everybody who's here must vote. You put a cutoff point at the line, that's the last person on the line, and everybody must vote. And we stand there and ensure that everybody voted that year. It was a lot of work put in in St. Kitts. That is why the government was changed. And I know you guys heard me spoke about this before, you know. The amount of people I saw in orange and yellow and, and whatever shirt they had on for the parties and election day, it was amazing. By the next morning when government changed, everybody have on red, you know. Everybody turned labor except Marisha. Because even Marisha, who was on the ground before anybody else, up till today, I can't find a shirt. Cannot find nothing to wear. Sister Vasquez over in the they lent me a shirt when I was canvassing with Douglas one afternoon. The shirt barely fit me, very tight, but I put it on because I wanted to be a part of the team. I didn't want to walk around and not looking like I'm a part of the team. So what I do, I squeeze it on my body. But all of a sudden, everybody a labor. Everybody a labor. And you know, we're gonna have to go back to some memory, you know, because I am asking the people, I am asking your divisions and your petitions to please stay focused. Like I said, let's don't pay attention to the dressing and the shoes and the socks and these things. Let's focus on what's happening. So we're gonna go down the line. We're gonna drop these clips. Let's remember the difference between 14,000 whatever in 2021 to now 17,000 in 2023 does not add up. Eh? The equation don't equate. We might have to get Congress to fix that for us. So let's go down the line and listen to the clips and use your common sense. I am happy that baby Bentley has put himself on the line and says the last number he gave is the correct number. So we're gonna hold him to that. But we know that that is not the correct number. We know that there's a real number. So we will do the forensic investigation and get the real number for you. But in the meantime, let's take a listen to we had started in 2021 budget with Sister Hazel, Hazel uh, Brandy Williams. Utilize this space, and so they have come back with a revised plan. Mr. President, my figures from the persons at finance as well as the The project manager is showing us that the amount paid out to contractors and subcontractors so far amounted to $6.853 million. There is an additional amount of another $6.218 million remaining for the contractors and subcontractors. And this amount includes variation. Because remember I said earlier, I gave you what the 
initial plan was and now we have come back with an almost well addition to four six additions to the new building and so indeed there will be variations what i can say to you mr president and based on the figures that i'm been given we have now used 14.218 million dollars out of the 19 million dollars allocated for this project it means then mr president that we are still on the budget okay okay so we understand that that is sister hazel brandy williams in 2021 and that was a presentation 2021. Remember, this project started in 2017 eh? and should be completed in 24 months. So that is Sister Hazel. Now, let's hear Baby Brantley respond to some questions on that matter. Like, no secret that right now there is a hospital project going on, but we've seen that it's incomplete. And not only that it's incomplete, it is, you know, I think it's behind and it's definitely over budget. So we would like to know, well, what are some of the, the correct, issues? Correct one aspect of your IRA. The hospital is not over budget. It's not over it budget. It is behind, but it's not over budget. And I think our junior minister of health spoke to that eloquently in the last budget debates in the House in December. She okay. broke it down. She explained what the budget was and how much has been spent thus far. Okay, remind us. So at this us. point, it is not over budget. Remind us at this point. Do you remember those, those figures? I believe that the number that she spoke to was somewhere in the region of 15 million or thereabouts and i think she said that some 13 million has been spent thus far um but she did speak publicly on it in the budget debate so technically so, we, so yes. 15 13 million do we see it completing within budget two million you think well we will we will have finished? we will have to spend some extra money yes okay. but at this point i'm saying at this point it is incorrect to say that the, the hospital is over budget because we've not yet even exhausted the initial amount I take that back. I take that part back. But what are some of the issues where we see why it's behind then? Well, if we have already first, budgeted for it. First of all, it seems to me that in the ongoing discussion that people forget that we had two years of COVID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know that it is not popular for people to talk about COVID because people see it as an excuse. But complete. Yes. So this is the situation now. Uh, something that was started in 2017 um, that should be completed in 24 months was affected by COVID that came in 2020. The project that should have finished in 2019 was affected by COVID. Let's continue to 2023 and hear what the new junior minister have to tell us. Completing the interior is of the highest highest priority to our administration that is why 12 million dollars madam president would have been allocated in this budget to ensure its timely completion and madam president some would have you believe that we've blown through the initial 19 million dollar estimate with no hospital to show for it as minister evelyn indicated madam president we like facts on this side as the young people say we have our receipts <laughs> so madam president to date we have spent eight million three hundred and forty two dollars no sorry eight million three hundred and forty two thousand four hundred and forty three dollars and seventy six cents out of the initial 19 million budgeted we would have only spent eight million three hundred and forty two thousand four hundred and forty three dollars and seventy six cents out of the initial 19 million dollars budgeted so when you hear talks of over budget i want the house to have the official figures on record not those well you say the junior minister says they have the receipts and they want um, folks to understand that they have what's on record. So let's hear what Baby Bantley have to say. 
about those records. The, our new Minister of Health, she came and in her presentation, she would have sought to update the public on some expenditure at the hospital wing, the expansion project. And we recognize that there's been a, a bit of uncertainty created because she gave a number of, I think, somewhere just over $8 million. And uh, the previous Minister of Health had come, I believe it was in 2021, and given a number which was close to $14 million. So that's a significant difference in terms of how much has been spent. I have asked that that discrepancy be resolved. The information that has come now suggests that perhaps both figures were incorrect. And I will undertake that we will have a full number available to the public as soon as we can. And the reason that I do not have it today, Madam President, is because we have been advised that we have been affected adversely by the cyber attack that we had. And so some of the numbers, I'm told, they have to retrieve manually, and which has created a bit of a difficulty in us getting it for today, because I wanted to respond and clarify the situation today. You know, I want you guys to understand, you know, they use the cyber attack business to cover up some things, eh? And like they always say, a liar have no memory. That is why you call it a lie, right? While they're using the cyber attack to cover up whatever went wrong, whatever went on, they cannot have it both ways, you know. They cannot have it both ways. Because while Baby Bantley is telling us in that clip that there was some mix up and they cannot find the receipts. We have the junior minister of education, Troy Liber, telling us during budget debate about the hack. And he's telling us about the sophisticated equipment that his government have in place. They have backup systems. So whatever they lost, they was able to replenish and have something similar. Everything was restored. The only thing they lost was some emails. They have the hard backup. So I want you to hear, Brother Charlie, everybody. You see, you cannot talk to them separately. You got to put all of them together to see where they're lying and confusing themselves. Because if we're going to take Brantley's, baby Brantley statement, which we know we cannot take it, then you're going to have to throw Troy to the door. So let's put them together. Let's listen to Brother Charlie, everybody. It had been said, I think the Premier would have said it in his press conference, that we were the targets of a malicious cyber attack here on Nevis to our very sophisticated IT system. And you know what? We were the victims of a cyber attack, yes. And it happened on the 27th of January of this year. And the fact that the system was so sophisticated contributed to the attack, you know, because <laughs> the illicit actors who are out there, they created what you call ransomware. And the ransomware, the particular type of ransomware that was deployed or that was used to compromise our system here in Nevis, it only attacks um, networks of a certain sophistication. It only attacks what we call virtual machines. So, Madam President, if somebody were to take... What Brother Liber is telling us there is that if you walk into Charleston on a Saturday, Rain is only falling by Moffat Slack. 
There's no rain falling by her brother, Bakery. No rain falling by Mikey. Only over by Moffat. So the rain has a preference where to fall by Moffat. So the cybers, the cyber attack that they put up, they, they, all of the viruses only have a problem with CCM. They don't have no problem with NRP or labor or nobody else computer. Only CCM computer. Continue to listen. That particular ransomware program and they were to put it on your computer, it would not do anything. If they were to put it on my tablet, it would not do anything. If it was to be put on anybody's personal computer, it would not affect it. You understand that? Their system is so sophisticated that they run somewhere only want their computer. No other computer drive what penetrating. This is how perfect a system the CCM has. I want you guys to follow the conversation. It only attacks what we call virtual machines. Only those type of sophisticated server machines it attacks. So on the 27th of January, um, the good folks at IT got some calls from people in the various departments that our phones were down. That was the first indication, Madam President, that the phones were down. So the people at IT went naturally to look at the phone system. When they checked the phone system, they realized that there was no issue with the phones themselves. And so they went and they did a little deeper investigation. And those investigations revealed that the system itself had been compromised, or as we would say colloquially, hacked. Basically, what happened is that the ransomware infiltrated the virtual machines and they were able to encrypt these machines. So we couldn't get access to our network. So those persons who are in the NIA who would normally come into their computer and sign on to their computer, you would not be able to get access. The internet that we have also, everything is run through our virtual server. So those servers would have been encrypted, so that meant that the entire NIA internet was down because we have a centralized system. It's not a case where you have your home internet and so somebody hacks your, your computer and so it's only the computer that's hacked. The entire system runs through the virtual servers. So the system was hacked and the entire system was brought down. Madam President, it was a cause for concern, of course. It was a, a big disturbance. All of our um, departments were down. We couldn't really function. And so the, it happened on a Thursday. And so then the Friday passed. And for the entire weekend, the IT department would have worked over the weekend to try their best to restore our system. We would have been very cautious also because you wouldn't want to try to open up the system again only to have the ransomware infiltrate the system once more. So we took our time over the weekend. And, and I want to give kudos to the good people at our IT department led by Mr. Craig David. You know, because it was a quite a Herculean task to bring back up the network in such a short time. Because over the weekend, we were able to identify what the threat was, and we were able to come up with a plan of action to bring the NIA network back up. Luckily for us, we had what we call a hard backup that was off of the system. Our system, let me tell you a little bit. The system is very sophisticated, Madam President. System consists of virtual machines. Virtual machines are housed in what you call hypervisors, Madam President. And the hypervisors are housed on what you call a server blade. So the server blade is a big 
server machine, computer machine, that holds several different virtual machines. I want you all to understand, you know, that this man supposed to be our junior minister of education. Do you guys understand what he's bringing to these kids of Nevis? This kind of scamming, this can work. This scamming cannot work. Brother Troy, there is no kind of grandstanding and all this nonsense you're trying to feed the house in the NIA assembly. We got sensible people out here who understand these terminologies. People, that's why I'm playing the clips because I want people to hear your dumb backside and what you are trying to feed the people of Nevis. I am playing these clips that people could understand the nonsense you are talking in assembly and say so you are talking to people. So continue talking your nonsense, Joy. And we had what we called a multi-layered backup system. So it was not just a system running on its own. We had a backup, what we call a warm site, Madam President. So you would remember that we had the Treasury fire in Nevis some years back. And we had a lot of information that was held at the Treasury. So we would have learned from what happened then. So we had real-time backups. And what the real-time backup does is that if the servers are housed in building A and building A goes down, we would be immediately able to restore the system from building B that holds our real-time backups. So a sophisticated system. We would have learned from the Treasury fire. So they would have learned from the Treasury fire. So they had backup that is somewhere across the globe. Some say it's in Canada. Whether it's in Canada or in St. Kitts, the bottom line is they have a very sophisticated system. One of the best systems, better than anybody else's system. So there is backup. There's hard backup someplace so they can go live instantaneously if required. Continue listening to the Jack. So we call it a warm site, which means that the, the primary site is hot, that's being used, and you have a warm site that's ready to use in the event that the primary site goes down. Now, these hackers are very sophisticated. So they would have encrypted the files at site A, but then they were also very smart in encrypting the sites on B also. So, you know, people out there and they sit and they think up of ways to do bad. Some, some people do that. Madam now, you heard what this minister just said. Some people out there and they just think of ways to do bad. Well, my summation, you know, and my observation why I'm so constant in what's going on in Nevis, you know is because this CCM government under the leadership of Baby Brantley to me, if they really want to do good for the people of Nevis, they will come to the public, they will come to me, and let's have a conversation, you know. Not out there trying to bullshit us, throwing up smoke screen and doing all kind of manner evil to cover their I'm doing, you know. So they, when they should be doing the work of the people, that they have been paid to do. They're out there thinking about doing bad. I heard Troy say in a previous clip, which I have someplace, that the former deputy premier in joining the campaign says he will support his premier all the way to the gates of hell, but he's not going to go in there with him. He will push him in. He would not go in there with him. But the same Troy, came back and said he will go to the extent of going to hell and let the rest know if they can come. This is the kind of donkey we got down there dealing with the education department. So continue listening to them. These are people I love to let you know. It's, it's kind of hard to say what I'm saying and put love behind it. 
But I have nothing but love for them as a human. But what they are doing to the country and to the people is dead wrong and I cannot support it. I cannot hate them as persons because I was taught to love. But I cannot support the nonsense they are doing to our sister Island Davis. They are the ransomware. They are the ransomware. They are taking our people at ransom in our beloved sister island of Queen City Navis. We are being held at ransom by Baby Bentley and his team. So continue to listen to the ransom we are. President, and it's not because of any lack of preparation on our part that this happened, because as we speak, the city of Oakland in California, in the United States of America, big city, they were hacked by ransomware last week. And it's a similar ransomware to what attacked us here on Nevis. So it's something similar that has happened to them. And they have had to declare a state of emergency, actually, in Oakland. So as we speak today, Oakland is still under a state of emergency because they were affected by ransomware, similar to what affected us here on Nevis. Madam President, we did not have to declare a state of emergency. This happened on a Thursday. We were able to identify what happened and over the weekend, we were able to put a plan in place to start to reconstruct and to restore the system. And so by early in the following week, we were able to take our hard backups that we had and we were able to recreate new virtual machines and a new environment for the NIA. Most of the users on the NIA system, they would only know that the computer has come back up and that they, they are able to once again access their information. But they won't be aware of all that has happened. But what we did, or what the good folks at IT did, was to create a completely new environment for the NIA to operate within, a new virtual environment. And Madam President, we have been able to restore most of the data that was encrypted by the ransomware. So we didn't really lose our data. We lost. You heard what the junior minister is saying there. They have restored. They have not really lost much of their data. Are you telling me that those receipts from the expansion wing at the Alexandra Hospital might be the only data that they lost in this hack? Let's continue listening. Lost our email accounts. Our emails were served. What we, we hosted our emails on-prem. We hosted them ourselves within the NIA. We have since moved to Microsoft Outlook, which is offering us endpoint security, um, Madam President. So we have shifted our emails to Microsoft. And of course, Microsoft is a company that goes, that needs no introduction anywhere. If you've used a computer, then you've had interaction with Microsoft. They are an industry um, leader. So our emails are now hosted by Microsoft as opposed to being hosted by the Navy Island Administration. Madam President, so where are we now with our IT system? So we work to rebuild our virtual machines and our server networks, and we have recreated a new NIA IT ecosystem. So that system is running at about 90% right now. I think all of our departments have 
already been migrated onto the new system, and so we are at 90%. Our new emails have already been deployed, and I think to some good intervention from the Honorable Premier, we have been able to get back the original email domains. So persons out there in the outside world who used to interact with us by email would be able to do so using the same emails. Okay? And that is a big plus for us. So we are back up at yes, at NIA.NIAGov.com. So our NIAGOV.com emails are what we would be using. So we were able to restore that. Thanks to some. So that, that email that um, Baby Brantley said nobody knew who I was, that's what he sent me to reach him on. It's still up and running, they say. So you guys could email Baby Brantley to find out how much they pay for the ransomware. But you know, we're going to move on to something else. And like I'm saying to you, my good people, let's not lose focus and worry about who going to who party and who dressing up in white and who sucks pretty and who went for lobster and who got crab. Let's focus on what's going on at the Van Samri Airport. Let's find out, focus on what's going on at the, at the um, Alexandra. And there's something new, you know. I saw something new today. I understand that there's a big shingling going down at the Mondo track. Some VIP lounge has been installed for some 200 and what thousand dollars. Now, you guys remember not too long ago, there was a little hut being put down on Port Zante that this had cost some 200 plus thousand dollars. And my good friend Dwyer broke the story. He was on this program talking about it, where the then minister for that area, Brother Sean Richards, had to go back and check and say they had to check he did not know about that. I haven't heard anything about it since, but it went from 200 plus thousand to 100 and whatever. It reduced. That created a big stink in St. Kitts. But the Mondo track, there's a VIP project going on there, passing this some 200 and whatever. Thousand and million. I have to check my information. You folks online, you're all familiar with it. Drop it in the chat, let people see what I'm talking about. But there's some big project going on there to put down a VIP area, but nothing for the supporters, nothing for the, the people that will be taking part in the track and field, just for the politicians and their crew to be comfortable in a VIP looking at the horses, the slaves run around the track to entertain them. You know, this is the things that we have going on in Nevis. They're not thinking about the people. This CCM party, this NIA administration that is led by Baby Brantley, they're thinking about, a common, thank, thanks Alvan, 275,000 been spent for a VIP stand for the politicians and their friends, but nothing has been built to protect the folks that will be utilizing the space, the athletes and their guests and visitors from the inclement weather. So if you go on the track, when the rain start to fall, I hope you all not get a snow in Nevis and St. Gisina, because if snow start to fall in the air, you get wet. But when all you go on the track, and the rain start to fall, or you pull out your umbrella, or, or you haul us under a tent, or get out of there. While the government ministers and their VIP friends sitting in a comfortable, air conditioned, luxurious mini hotel, watching you through windows, running out there, entertaining them. Talk about modern slavery. This is modern slavery. This is what used to happen back in the days. They used to watch 
black fighting, black entertaining them for their benefits while they sit down and bet and drink coffee and tea while you entertain them. And from what I understand, when they get drunk, they take the black man wife or whatever and they go and they do all kinds of things with them. It happening right there in Nevis. They want to expand the airport runaway for a private jet for their big friend. They want to build a VIP lounge at the Mondo track for their VIP friends. They don't want to do what needs to get done for the people of Nevis. I understand there is some lands being purchased in all around the airport where they're disrupting the fishing industry. They don't care about the fishermen then. These are the things that you all need to focus on, not the party they go to, not the friends they take pictures with. Because I'll tell you all this, thing. I don't think Dr. Joe is like the farmer hag. I don't even think Dr. Joe is naive like Dr. Douglas. Because farmer PM Douglas was very naive, you know. It's a lot of things that Douglas should have done and he eased up on them, you know. And he's sorry for Marga Dog and they come back and bite him, you know. With all this going now with Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe is not the naive, you know. I am of the view that Dr. Joe is paying attention and taking notes, but he is what you call governing. You have to be able to govern. You have to be able to control everything. You have to bring, make, do as best as you can for everybody. So there is a local administration in Nevis, according to the laws, that is the local administration and you have to function that way. And if somebody invite the man and he cabinet to a party, so be it. Enjoy your party if you want to go. If you don't want to go, you don't go. But at the end of the day, if the laws are broken and when we find that the laws are broken, we deal with them accordingly. Before we move on, because I'm not going to overtime with you all tonight, you, know. you all like this overtime business and make it a life. You understand? I have things to do, places to go. Have to go up and argue with Gwyneth and talk to Bevy and talk to my baby girl and make some phone calls and everything like that. You know, find out how sister and Farrell Smith doing how was she there, how is Cora doing, how is um my girl there, Ellen is doing, how is uh Fiona doing, how Julian doing, call up the dancing commission and make sure he okay. I think um Laura celebrating birthday. Happy birthday, Laura. I'm not sure if it's today or over the weekend, but um, happy birthday to you. I think your daughter celebrated birthday as well. Sister France, Dane in St. Martin. Happy birthday to you guys. Happy belated or happy birthday. But let me drop this other clip here with um, the baby speaking. Parry was a sole member of the opposition and therefore constitutionally, there could be no leader of the opposition appointed. Notwithstanding, we took a decision that we would provide an office to the Honorable Joseph Parry as he then was the sole member of the opposition. When the Honorable Joseph Parry decided to exit politics, you will recall there was a by-election and the Honorable Cleone Stapleton Simmons won that by-election and she therefore became the sole member of the opposition. This government continued the arrangement by having that office available to the Honorable Cleone Stapleton Simmons, not as leader of the opposition, since no person was so qualified, but as an office for the parliamentary opposition on the island of Nevis. That office had been set up, staffed, and we were paying the rent, we were paying the utilities, we were paying the member of staff. When I say we, the taxpayers, and funding had been allocated for that. In the election of December 12th last year, the Nevis Reformation Party would have won two seats. The difficulties, however, arose shortly thereafter, where the leader of the NRP, Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge, and the other successful candidate for the NRP, the Honorable Cleone Stapleton Simmons, 
apparently were not getting along and could not come to a decision as to who would be leader of the opposition. In fact, we subsequently learned that the Honorable Cleon Stapleton Simmons had been suspended from the NRP. And in the budget debates for the 2023 budget, the Honorable Cleon Stapleton Simmons addressed the Assembly as an independent member of the opposition. We had at all times continued with the office and paying, as I've indicated, the necessary outgoings in relation to that office for the parliamentary opposition. Cleon Stapleton Simmons, because of her tenure, because she was there prior, would have continued in control of that office and the government would have continued to pay the rent and the staff member and the outgoings, the utilities, etc. On the 9th of March, we received a letter on the letterhead of the Nevis Reformation Party, and that letter was addressed to the prominent secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Colin Doerr, and that letter was written by the Honorable Dr. Janice Daniel Hodge in her capacity as leader of the NRP, and she indicated through that correspondence that she is requesting with immediate effect, and I quote, through this correspondence, I'm requesting that with immediate effect, all courtesies, privileges, and assistance pertaining to the office of the opposition and on behalf of the Nevis Reformation Party be directed to her attention. The difficulty, ladies and gentlemen, and members of the public that we found ourselves in is that we now had two members of the opposition, one from the NRP, the other who had been suspended from the NRP and who was now an independent member. Both were essentially saying that they had the right to that office of the opposition. And so we had a letter from the leader of the NRP, Dr. Daniel Hodge, indicating that all courtesies of that office should be extended to her. Clearly the taxpayers have no ability to pay for two offices and since it seemed that the two members of the opposition could not come to any consensus, we wrote on the 20th of March to them both, indicating that we were forced to close the office until such time as clarity could be achieved. And so that office, we regret to advise, we have indicated it will be closed as of the 30th of April. Now, listen to Baby Bradley making that report. If we are to be fair and use our common sense and be reasonable minded people, I think we all should agree that out of that long winded speech at his press conference, we could see the lies and the deceit and the vindictive behavior of Baby Brantley. Because Baby Brantley knows that. There was three parties that we know now contested the elections of December 12th, 2020 for the NIA. Baby Brantley is well aware that only two parties was able to bring home any seats from that 2012 elections. The CCM, under his leadership, managed to claim three seats that is in contention, which is three is the majority out of five. Those seats are still in contention, and we know because he said that there was irregularities during the elections. He said there was hiccups. There was excess ballots in boxes that did not match and should not be there. We heard it from him. So he's well aware that his government is in question. It's in limbo. He's well aware of that. Well, just as the CCM government, the NIA government is in limbo at the moment. Because as a matter of fact, you guys know there was a, two petitions went out to the courts. And you guys know that there was some decision made 
to throw out the cases. You guys also aware that one of those cases which affect J.D. Keynes and um, the other gentleman there, can't bring his name at the moment, is in appeal process. So Baby Bantley knows that his government, the current NIA that is running Nevis, is not on good standing, is not on good footing. Just the same, there's some problems with the NRP who want to see it. He said the leader of NRP, so he knew who is the leader of the NRP. And by him knowing who is the leader of the NRP, he should give that respect and that courtesy to the leader of the NRP, which is Sister Janice Daniel Lodge. How dare he sit in his position as the interim premier and be paying for an office for an individual because there was there previously? Government don't work so baby Brantley. Government does not work like that. In our system in St. Kitts Nevis, once you lose your seat or you lose your position, the same day you're gone, somebody has come in. So from, this, from December 12th, 2022, whether there was a decision on who the leadership is for the opposition or not, that situation with that office should have been resolved. If you had the intention of financing it until you go to parliament, then it's a different matter. But my question is, I have a couple of questions. This office that we are speaking about, is this the property of the NIA? And if not, does the NIA has a contract with the landlord for that property, a lease for a particular amount of time? Who has the lease for that office? Is it the NIA or is it the NRP? These are some questions that you should come and explain to the people, you know. Because who are you, baby Brantley, to determine who from the opposition occupies that office? The only thing you're concerned about is should be the NRP. The NRP want to see it. There's a leader of the opposition. She's the leader of NRP. Whatever semantics you all want to deal with in the NIA assembly is one thing. But you need to stop being so vindictive and dirty and give the due respect to Sister Janice Daniel Hodge as the leader. You will know she's the leader of the NRP. The other individual does not have a party. She says she's independent. She mentioned that in the house after the fact. She did not run on an independent ticket. She ran on an NRP ticket. All communications from you should be going to NRP. The NRP leader is Janice Daniel Hodge. Stop disrespecting the people. Stop this, that try to mislead people. Stop thinking you're taking us for fools. You're not taking Marisha for no fool. Let's just suppose the shoe was on the other foot. You are getting payments, subsidy from the federal cabinet that comes over to Nevis monthly. Let's just say that Dr. Terence Jones' cabinet decides they're not sending any subsidy to Nevis until the electoral matter of 2022, December 12, 2022 is all. We are not sending any monies to Nevis until such, uh, such time that the matter of who is going to run Nevis clarify. How would you feel about that, baby, Brandy? That is something Dr. Joe can do with what you just did to the, uh, the opposition office, the honorable prime minister and his cabinet can now follow your pattern and says the government of Nevis, the NIA is still in the air because we have a court matter pending. A one seat decision could flip who 
govern Nabis. So until we get that problem resolved, we're going to withheld. We're going to withhold payments to Nabis. How would you like that, David Bantley? And I am asking Sister Jan Janice Daniel Hatch through this medium, you know. I am asking Sister Janice Daniel Hatch through this medium. And I'm going to reach out to her as well via phone to appeal that letter that you say you sent to her, to the federal government, to the AG, because you're out of place and damn forward. You're out of place and forward. You don't own Nevis, and you don't own the taxpayers' money. This is not your private dollars, baby Brantley. And what you are doing to Nevis and the people of Nevis is destroying Nevis and dividing people. I am not going to stand by and be quiet when you're doing these dirty things to the people of Nevis, baby Bentley. This is uncalled for. This is uncalled for. You have a responsibility to respond to Sister Janice Daniel as the leader of NRP, as you well know, who is the next party that is the opposition. Whatever going on in the NIA, I have no control over. But you fully well know Janice Daniel Hodge is the leader of NRP and is supported by the majority of the NRP members. So why? Why are you dividing the people? You're a divider and you continue to do that all your life. You get a rise out of it. You get a rise out of um, keeping people apart and putting people to fight. If your partner wants to continue going down the road with you and destroy her political career, that is on her. That is one thing. But I will not stand by baby Bentley and watch you destroy. And the people of Nevis will stand up to you. you know. From the time you had the co press conference and chat that nonsense yesterday, the good people of Nevis, whether they support NRP or not, should hit the streets and demand that you do the right thing because you're destroying Nevis. You're destroying the democracy that people have fought for all their life. Your cuss off saying kids people don't have nothing to do with them. You talk about butcher putting pepper in rice and bone in soup. You don't want to have nothing to do with St. Kitts. But all of a sudden, you're hugging up St. Kitts. You're hugging up the, the, the prime minister. You all of a sudden, you love certain things. But you know, love same Daniel daughter. Who I understand basically make you what you are today. Whether it's so or not. You got to learn to respect your people, baby Brantley. Respect go a long way. You go a long way. And I want the people to hear you again talking. So I'm going to let you talk. Because when you open your mouth, you never come out. I hope you got your, your rag. The new government took over in St. Kitts, Nevis, the Labour Party led by Prime Minister Drew, in August of 2022. They've been there now. Roughly eight months. And they said that they would reform certain programs. And one of those programs was the PAP, PAP Poverty Alleviation Program. Now, I was part of the government, Team Unity government, led by Dr. Timothy Harris, that introduced the PAP program. And I'm here today to say that I never understood that the PAP program was intended to be a permanent program. That was never my understanding as a member of that government. My understanding was that the PAP program, like many other programs that were introduced, were introduced as a necessary response to the COVID-19 pandemic, which had wreaked havoc in terms of jobs, with so many of our people employed, in particular in the hospitality sector, restaurants, hotels, people who are home, taxi drivers, and we felt we needed to do something to assist. And so the formulation was done that households making $3,000, less than $3,000 a month, in the household, that they would get this $500 a month as a top-up. 
I never understood that to be a permanent program. It was, in my respectful view, as I understood it, a program that was designed to treat with the difficulty and the need of our people in an extremely difficult time that is a global pandemic. Now, we are coming out of the pandemic and we are now seeking to look to growth, development and to get the economy moving. And my view is that as the economy starts to move, as we start to create more jobs, as people start to be able to go back to work, you should see the numbers on these social programs falling off. That's what should happen. The numbers should be falling off. And where you had eight and nine and ten thousand, that should come down to seven and to five and to four and to two. It will never come down, I believe, to zero because we will always have some people who need assistance. But we must not seek to treat these programs as if they are permanent programs where in perpetuity a large number of our population expects to get free money from the government. Harris! Now, when I listen to this premier, is telling the people of Nevis that they are expecting to get free money from the government when you as premier are not doing nothing for Nevis. You're not creating no income, no jobs for the people. You depend on the subsidy coming from Bastia monthly to pay your bills and prop you up. That's what you do. What you are telling the people of Nevis you have no money for them. You got no free money for them. They don't deserve what you deserve. And guess what? The money that you are getting from the federal government, uh, wherever it's coming from, is okay for you to take 270 plus thousand of that money and build a VIP lounge at the Mondo Track for you and your friends to have a good time. But the poor people of Nevis, that entitled to nothing. They shouldn't be getting enough free money. But you must get a free space to lie with your boys, to drink your wine, and whatever else you all do inside there. I hear you all just drop towel and thing and bend over and do all kind of stuff. So all you need bathroom to clean up and all you done, do all your exercise and fix your size and all kind of size. But you remember what Dougie tell the farmer had, you know? No more riding in Petrie, you know? So are you think I'm going to have the man to track VIP to ride in? Are you going to find out? We're going to deal with it. No kind of riding going to go on inside there. Because we're going to do what we have to do to reclaim Nevis. Whatever it takes to reclaim Nevis and save Nevis, we're going to do what we have to do within the law. We're not going to violate nobody. We're not going to fight nobody. But the people are going to eventually realize what kind of people they have there said so the governing our, our, our little sister island of Queen City Nevis. The people are going to wake up and realize, you know, we have um, people resigning all week, you know. From last week, they're resigning. They were campaigning for the last seven years, best prime minister ever. Best this, best that, just a couple of months ago, during the campaign. PLP is the best thing for the St. Kitts. The farmer hug is the best premier there ever, best prime minister today. They're saying the last values, the last this, the last that. We're going to happen in Nevis too, you know. All of them that hugging you up and kissing you up and loving you up. That's the kind of life all you want to live. All you going to do it on your own dime, you know. Not on taxpayers' money. Because I'm not going to ease up until the people of Nevis get what is due to them. I am not going to. And I just want you to know that I'm going to drop this other clip. Because I'm not going over time tonight, you know. Warning are you. I know you're out there priming for me. I am not going over time tonight. I'm going to drop the clips and we're going to talk the things in. Next week, we expect to have the new 
um, police commissioner with us to give us some updates on what's happening in the Federation and his plan for the force and for the people and the safety of the island. So look forward next week, Wednesday, we will have our um, new um, commissioner of police, the man James Sutton um, with us. So come early and we might go a little overtime next week, all depends on what's going on here, but not tonight. Not tonight. Take a listen to Baby Bantle and the other nonsense. Parry was a sole member. Not of that the one there. Not that one there, Baby Bantle. Not that one there. Not that one there. This one. This is the one I want to hear you talk your things. The new government took. Not that one there, either, Baby Bantle. Where are you going? Where are you hiding all the West thing them from me? Why are you hiding these things? Oh, this is the one I'm looking for. Where Doggy telling you about your dirty self. Come on, Doggy. Come in. Come in. Clean. And that is exactly what I see. Nothing to say, but just want to say something. Making all kinds of statements which are very insulting to people. Only you have sense. Nobody else in this parliament has sense. It bothers me because there is no need for that kind of arrogance. He's the most intelligent person in the world. He's the most sensible person in the world. He's the richest parliamentarian in the world. It's a glimpse of the nature of the member for me to see. Arrogant, pompous, talking down to people. I have been around for 16 years, and that's not a good attitude for a politician. You need to change your attitude. You need to stop talking ill of people. And as long as you're doing it in this parliament, I will defend them and I will attack you. Yes, man, that's Doggy putting him in the place there, you know. Doggy now play with him. Doggy said, baby, Brantley, all the good face talk bad about people and put down people. That's all he do, spend his time dirty people, cussing people. You understand? That's all he do, just dirty people all the time. You could see a remote look, you know? A bulldog, he think he is. Listen to him talking about our first national hero. Listen to him. Now, and so the caller makes a good point that it's as if you're asking somebody for the evidence when you know that that evidence doesn't exist because it couldn't exist. There was no mechanism to have that evidence from that period. What I marvel at though, is that while some say the comment was never made, we are aware that in Nevis, ever since we were babies sitting on our mother's knees, that we were told that Bratcher made that comment. We go to Anguilla, and the people in Anguilla equally are convinced that Bratcher made that comment. And so the question has to be asked of how it is that so many generations of us in Nevis and in Anguilla were fooled, if you will, into believing that Bratcher made that comment when there are those now who are saying the comment was never made. I listened to a radio program recently and one of the commentators said, that is false, that comment was never made. And I smiled to myself because how would he know? He's saying it is false because it's convenient for him to say that it is false. And it is easy for you to say to people, prove it. How do we prove some of the things that we believe? Let's face it. Where does it come from? And the truth is that we have had a culture and a history of passing down information from generation to generation. And if you take a generation 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years on and you say to them, prove that this was said in 1965 at a political meeting, it is impossible to do so unless you can find people who are physically there who can say that this is what happened. So really, it's a debate, in my view, which is ultimately meaningless. The people of Nevis believe that the comment was made. There are those who support Mr. Bratcher, who said he never made the comment. And I think that's as much as we can say on the matter. People come. You know something? You're right about that. People of Nevis will believe the nonsense because people like you, who is a divider, going to sell this kind of stuff, and as a leader, of any, any government. You need to stop trying to divide the people to your benefit because you got some of them that drink that blue Kool-Aid. I'm happy that privately, 
they are now telling me that you need to go. I'm happy that privately they're now telling me that they are seeing my light. The problem is, is to get them to that type point where they can come publicly and denounce you. Slowly, we get in there. But when I started this program just over two years ago and speaking about the things then, I couldn't get some of them to admit your faults and what the wrong you're doing to neighbors. But at least some of them now privately are admitting. And you know what? Maybe back in the 60s, we didn't have recordings or recorders to record the things that were said. But today, in 2020, in 2022, and in 2023, we have recording to hear you say that the best prime minister we ever had was Dr. Timothy Harris. You deny this. People come and whisper foolishness in your ear, telling us foolishness because St. Kitts and Nevis is enjoying an unprecedented time of prosperity. Unprecedented time of prosperity. The relationship, let me just take two minutes, Brother Lindsay, just to say that the relationship between St. Kitts and Nevis has never been better. It is the best, it is the best that we have seen. The best that we have seen, it is because of the closeness of that relationship that I could stand here tonight in Molyneux and speak to you, speak to you as a national of this country, as part of the Team Unity Administration. And if Vance Amory was here, he would have done similarly because we are now bound together in a very tangible and important way as we advance the interests of the country. Now in Nevis, for the first time, people are not seeing those age-old distinctions that we used to have. If you want a job and a job is at Park Hyatt, people go and Park Hyatt to work. Wherever work is in the country, people are saying, I am a national of this country and I'm taking advantage of that. People of St. Kitts are taking advantage of opportunities in the US and vice versa. You know why? Ultimately, we are two islands, one paradise. Two islands, but one country. And we need to continue to ensure that all of our people benefit from all that we have to offer as a country. I thank the Honorable Prime Minister. I thank Team Unity and the vision that went into this. I have said so many times, right in St. Kitts, that we come from disparate places and disparate backgrounds. When I was in opposition, another man used to talk as hard to me as Timothy Harris when he talking from over there. Talk hard, I used to fear him because you know he's big. So to come from there, to where we are now says to you that we were able to put away those things and come together put away those things and come together for the benefit of the people of nevis thank you god bless yeah is it the best prime minister ever but you end up saying he's not good for you you call him a kind of pop you call him chihuahua the chihuahua you call him you know but that was the best prime minister because you couldn't get what you want. And you got your partner follow you. you know? Your partner follow you, so he's going to be the next prime minister. So let's take a listen to him too. My PLP family, this is our time, PLP. This is our time, PLP. As small as young of a party we are, we are the biggest party in heart. We are the biggest party for the people. We continue to move the people forward. We have a leadership that continues to move our people forward. And with your help, with each of you doing your part, with all of us working together, PLP will continue to grow from strength to strength. And the People's Labour Party will be a party, a force that will be continued to be reckoned with. Convention, this is our time now. People's Labour Party, this is our time now. We have proved. Now, that is the sister there that says she resigned because of the party no longer. The party not changing. Same party, Sister Akila. Now, let's continue to listen to her and Brother Sean, man. Move on. We have what it takes and we will continue to build our party. Let's rally behind our leadership. Let's rally behind but our But to him, leader. I also say that just as he 
became the third prime minister of this country. It is my intention to be the fourth prime minister of this country. Just as he became the first prime minister from Tabernacle, I intend to be the first prime minister from Saint Paul. I also said to him that just as there was a commitment with the Charlestown Accord prior to the elections of 2015 between them LP for each prime minister to serve two terms, so too Sean Richards expects to serve his two terms after the next election. The Concerned Citizens Movement. We truly appreciate your presence here in Sandy Point this afternoon. We have had a, a great working relationship with CCM and we intend. And additionally, as I make my bid for the next Prime Minister of this Federation, I ask for the full support of CCM. The Honorable Prime Minister has left. <laughs> well, when Sean Sharp drop anything, you know, the Honorable Prime Minister walk out because the Honorable Prime Minister, no, he not plan to give up that word, you know. <laughs> so he left. But after Sister Akila, uh, lovely speech that this is PLP time, I want all you to hear this, you know. It's been played so many times, but I want you all to hear this for yourselves. Because if these things wasn't so serious, they would be laughable. These are the people that are digging up the farmer hog. Best prime minister ever. Best this, best that, best that. But they want us now to believe that the problem is the same farmer hog. Listen. My fellow petitions and divisions. Six years ago, I took a bold step and entered the world of politics. I did this for no personal gain, but because of my deep desire to serve the people of constituency number three and my country at large. I joined the People's Labour Party and was proud to run on its banner because it was a party that aligned with my core principles of honesty, integrity, accountability, and good governance. I believe that once everybody worked together as a team with transparency and accountability, then success would naturally follow. This recipe did work, and on June 5th, 2020, the nation witnessed a historic victory when I defeated the St. Nevis Labour Party candidate to become the elected representative for constituency number three. I was not only the first female representative for West Bastille, but the first candidate to defeat a candidate running under the St. Nevis Labour Party banner in 75 years. I went into government with the team Unity Administration under the leadership of Dr. Timothy Harris. I was indeed honored to have served with all the members of the team and we demonstrated to the nation and the world that unity was strength and we accomplished quite a lot working together. The list of accomplishments is long, but I believe the nation will best remember my stellar leadership through the worst health crisis this country ever faced in over 100 years, the COVID-19 pandemic, and my efforts to transfer land titles to the people of the great. As we emerge from the pandemic, and all were looking forward to a brand new beginning with the reopening of the country and the economy, we were forced into an early election as the team unity construct collapsed for reasons that I will not go into at this time. The people spoke and a new administration was ushered in under the leadership of Dr. Terence Drew. 
after the elections, I did some soul searching to determine the best path forward. What I did realize is that the party and leadership I once believed in had strayed away from its core principles, which no longer align with mine. If one wants to keep moving forward and upward, one will eventually have to let go of the load that is tying one's feet to the ground and hindering progress. I, therefore, must state here that I have made the decision to step away from the umbrella of the People's Labour Party with Dr. Timothy Harris as leader. As of today, March 24, 2023, I am no longer a part of the executive or the member of the People's Labour and I understand that the, the, the recording is long, but you all didn't miss nothing. This is Akila saying that she no longer a part of the PLP. She resigned as an ex executive member, as a deputy leader, and as being a participating member of the PLP because the, the policies and whatever is no longer aligned with her values. They never had no values. None of them value nothing. All that happened right now, you know, is that the pig pen is losing members. The farmer hog can no longer fill the trough with as much that it was doing. So the little piggies um, start walking away. You know, while the trough was there, where the taxpayers' slush fund was being used for their benefit, it was the best prime minister, country running good, everybody having a good time, Neve is getting a fair share, Everybody having a ball, people not paying their social, people not paying their taxes. Deja Marisha, stop out. You won't come in, it's 14 days lockdown, and all this kind of nonsense, all them kind of shit they were talking. Right? But from the time the people in St. Kitts woke up and said, no more, all of a sudden, the core values no longer align. Even Talbot changed his mind. Remember Talbot said he gonna move the, the dump from Canary to St. Paul's? Well, Talbot said he changed his mind. He gonna leave the dump in Canary because that is where he making his money right now. He keep going Canary every day and getting money over there. So he don't want to move the, the dump to St. Paul's anymore. That was his campaign, that he's going to move the dump from Canary to St. Paul's because people in St. Paul's bring in the truckload of garbage to Canary. These are kind of campaign they were had. If these things wasn't so serious, they would be laughable. But as I said tonight, you know, I said I wasn't going overtime, but it looked like I hit in the overtime mark. So just before um, we get into the end of this program this evening, there's a lot more to give. We'll, we'll continue next week. There's a lot of things to blast from the past because I know you guys forget where we started. So we're going to give you a little um, information from the past that you all understand how this thing came about and the COVID situation and all of the lies and stuff that was presented and the fake news. So let's take a quick listen to Dwyer and hear what he have to say to the good, the good people of St. Kitts Nevis today. Greetings. The last two administrations share a common legacy. They are both responsible for every single citizenship by investment real estate project which has not been completed in this country. That means just about every real estate CBI project with the notable and stellar exception of the Park Hyatt Hotel. Both former administrations are responsible for every ugly scar on our landscape from Frigate Bay to West Farm to Newton Ground and you know who most of these projects are developed by. The former administrations are to be blamed for issuing passports to people who had paid far less than the legal minimum and gotten citizenship with the consequence that with less money coming in, there would be less money obviously to complete the facilities. And the developers would ask to be issued more citizenships. So their business seemed not to be so much about building and completing projects that would benefit the people of the country, but to make money from the issuance of passports. Both administrations have to take responsibility 
for that. And both of them have to be held accountable for the loss of opportunity from every single one of these unfinished projects, which, while they may have been massive money makers for the Chinese developers, for sales agents overseas, and for a handful of locals, they were a loss to our people. Billions of dollars earned by mostly foreign people and their local bodies. But what do our people have to show for it? A pock-marked and degraded landscape made so by a toxic mixture of developers from mainland China and their local friends. Both administrations have to take responsibility and must be made to account for the corruption and bubble that mushroomed in the CBI industry between 2006 and 2022. They have to accept the guilty verdict and repay to the people of this country for our loss. The damage we suffered as a country by the US Treasury Department's advisory put out in 2014, by the loss of visa-free access to Canada, by the anxiety and losses caused by the threat from the European Union to end our visa-free status to its member countries, and for our loss caused by the failure of the former administration to solve the very problems that their own poor leadership inflicted upon us. But they, of course, are not in office. And in any case, you don't look at the perpetrator to bring justice. So the task falls to the people of this country who have invested the authority to do so in the Dr. Drew administration, which has a choice between doing nothing and doing something. They will either leave these deteriorating and ugly sites to get worse and bring no benefit to the people of this country, or they will make an effort to put the sites to good use for a public purpose and a public good. They will either leave the corruption behind them and move on, or they will hold past decision makers who did not account to the people of this land during their stewardship to do so now. Either way, there will be serious consequences. So I am presuming that the Drew administration possesses the backbone to face the serious consequences of doing something rather than the more serious consequences of doing nothing. And having acted to do something in the best interest of the people of the country and in the best interest of justice, which he himself has said on more than one occasion, must be pursued wherever the justice leads to whichever person regardless of his or her political persuasion or status, let justice be done. Here are some thoughts which I hope might help us in discussing the way forward to a solution. I would give all of these developers six months to ready their projects for business. Failure to do so would result in government compulsorily acquiring these properties and putting them on the market for sale preferably to local interests. These developers have had far more than enough time and opportunity to finish the projects so that petitions and divisions could reap a fair and just reward and benefit. But the only people who have not received their fair reward and benefit are the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. The developers have received, the agents, their local friends, but not the vast majority of the people of this country. Well, who were these projects all about in the first place? So who were these governments serving? Ask yourselves. And we would tell the developers that from the compensation which we would ordinarily pay for having acquired their unfinished projects, we would deduct the difference between the amount that they should have charged for the citizenships and the amount that they actually accepted for the deals. And we would also deduct a penalty or, if you will, compensation to the government for these developers having broken the law. The people now who receive citizenship by investing in these projects did so illegally for the most part, as I've said. So we can cancel their citizenships. But we wouldn't do that. What we would do is tell them that the projects in which they invested broke the law. Their citizenships were not obtained in accordance with the law. We will tell them that developers have failed 
but we will allow them to hold their citizenships. And if they have any grievance, let them turn to the developers, whether in a court here, which would be good, our lawyers could make some money, or a court in China or elsewhere. But we will tell them, enjoy your passport, but you have no interest in that development. The government and people were wronged, you ended up with a passport. If you were misguided, you were not misguided by the government or the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. So deal with who misguided you. And if necessary, to get these, these things done, we pass legislation. These projects cannot remain as they are. The people of St. Kitts and Nevis deserve far more from the CBI than a dividend for 500 or 250 EC dollars. And I'm not blaming the Drew administration for what happened in the past. They inherited it. Now they are tasked with either doing nothing, which has consequences, or doing something, which has consequences too. We deserve systems in addition to these dividends. We deserve systems that provide us with sustainable and healthy food and water and energy, proper health and education and infrastructure, climate and weather resiliency, and a number of other things, and more than enough money was collected between 2006 and 2022, even with all of the cheating and illegality and corruption. And it is a grievous sin committed against our people by persons who were in charge. And the sin must be addressed. I would similarly suggest Kikishan Hill be given likewise treatment. In addition to all of that, the present administration inherited a situation which needs, in my view, to be corrected because it deprives the people of this country of millions upon millions of dollars, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars over the years. An agreement was made in 2013, then extended in 2018, and then extended again in 2022, months before the elections. That agreement was a promotion and marketing agreement under which a foreign firm was to be paid US $5,000 for each successful applicant coming into the projects like the Chinese prison project. And for other options, such as the Sustainable Growth Fund, the firm would be paid 10,000 US dollars for each successful applicant. So the Chinese prison, the project, which we are told, and we need more information on this, we need to know what's happening, and we need to know how the money is going to be broken down. How much will the people of this country get from a project that was wrong from every angle, from the very beginning, signed off by the former administration, the last one. So the Chinese prison project, which we are told sold about 5,500 units of investment, for that, the promoters and marketers would receive one firm, nearly 30 million US dollars. And from the other options, it could earn and could have earned and could have been earning 15 to 20 million US dollars a year. We need to know about this and we need this to be stopped. Yes, you have to promote and market, but fees must be reasonable. And the maximum beneficiary, the primary beneficiary of all of this, while you have to pay professionals and other people to get the product properly marketed, the principal beneficiary is the nation of St. Kitts and Nevis. This arrangement does not recognize who the principal beneficiary is. And so it is not good. Another thing about this arrangement is, I am told, that the firm which enjoys it also has an exclusive for promotion and marketing of St. Kitts and Nevis. Exclusive, but it also has exclusives or represents other countries that are in the CBI industry? If so, how could that be fair? As I said, the present administration cannot justify paying citizens of this country EC $250 or $500 as a CBI dividend when a single firm based overseas is pulling in 40 to 50 million US dollars. This cannot continue and we need 
explanations and corrective action. Yes, the present administration has some decisions which are going to have serious consequences, both in the CBI business and elsewhere. Dr. Drew and his colleagues are going to have to decide whether they choose for the people or they choose for some persons. All of these bad things need to stop. Stopping them is of primary importance in the discharge of its most important, according to it, its most important mission. That's the present administration, which is good governance. Let us see what they will do. We wish them well. I personally have confidence that they will address and correct these mistakes, these misdeeds, and these injustices. It's left now to be seen whether my confidence in them is well reposed. Until next time, God bless. You know, folks, um, that is another powerful commentary from the man G. A. Dwyer Astafan. And, you know, week after week, we come here and listen to these commentaries. And I have always said that um, it will be nice if Dwyer um, would just call names or uh, address some of the issues over there, maybe. So I actually took him up on that conversation um, last week when we spoke, you know, and um, the honest thing is his response to me, though unacceptable, is reasonable, very reasonable, because in his um, commentaries weekly, he referred to the former administration and anyone who is paying attention, the former administration was the People's Labour Party, PLP, led by the former hog. The People's Action Movement, PAM, led by Sean Richards. And the CCM of Nevis, led by Baby Brantley. And those were the former administration. Those were the concussion. Those was the Team Unity administration. So in Dwyer's defense, I have to give him that, that I mean, <laughs> I remember back in the days when I first came to New York, there was a saying, I give you the token, you want me to take it to the bus as well? I gave you the token, you want me to take it to the train as well? Well, do I speak of the former administration and you know who the former administration was? The tri-party of CCM, and, um, PLP, and the PAM. So you all put them in the bag and do you all footwork, do you all groundwork? Dwyer is making his commentary and he's painting up with a, a, a broad brush about what transpired under the former administration. You all know who was there. The people of Nevis know who was there. The people of St. Kitts know who was there. So if he decides not to call names, we can't force him to call names, but he's presenting the information as he said. So I'm going to try and give him the leeway until such time. Because like I told him last week, you know, I heard you spoke about geothermal and other things, but you have not touched the Van Samri Airport. You have not touched the overrun and the um, delay in the um, hospital wing, the Alexandria um, expansion wing. You're not touching these things. And I didn't really get an answer um, direct from him, but he acknowledged what I'm saying, um, you know. Well, you, 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 you know, some say um, he's a diplomat. So, you know, in these things, I think Dwyer are a diplomat as well. Um, but the time will come when Dwyer are going to speak out, you know. The time going to come where Dwyer will speak out. I heard some always been talking about who are born politician and who are professional politician and who is this and who is that. And I would hate to know that a government that I just fought for, foot and nail, I put my life on the ground for them to get a new labor administration back in office. I would hate to know that they fall under the category that some kind of try to call politicians. Uh, born politician. Because I see him as the criteria to be a politician is to be a thief, lie, dishonest, misleading, deceitful, name it. 
if I listen to some, those are the things that would fall under the heading of politician. And I don't see Dr. Dre in that light. I don't see the current Labour administration in those lights. I don't see the new AG in those situations as the previous one. So I would hope and I would pray that um, these new dispensation of politicians are not of the farm administration. Because as someone tell me a couple of weeks ago, Marisha, when you get the real deal, you're going to be very disappointed because these people are not different. I'm going to still hang in there and believe that they're different. They are not the same. We will not get nothing half as bad as the former Team Unity Administration, of which the CCM was a part of. They cannot see where Dr. Joe will take the country down that road. I can see them trying their best to um, improve and our um, future. And folks, um, last week, like I said, um, I received several requests to get my program up on YouTube, and I'm trying to play the good politician as Sam asked me to, to be by making sure my um, Facebook fans are not disadvantaged. So following my lives and weekly, um, I have an assistant technician there that makes sure that the programming is up on YouTube. So for those of you who um, go to YouTube, please remember to subscribe and just hit that bell and keep spreading the news and ask folks to go across to YouTube and check the, um, the programming. It's going to be at times where we're going to transfer fully over to YouTube. So start practicing to hit that YouTube channel and keep us pumping. Um, I um, also want to once again um, say big up to our AG. He's here in the area. He's in the Washington, D.C. area doing some work on behalf of the Federation. I wish him much success and I look forward to getting him back here upon his return to the Federation to give us some updates and how things went there in the Washington area. I want to say good evening to Sister DeBasso, the man Ivor Henry, the man Ashburn Brown and crew. Hope you guys are all right down there, the man X-Man Harris. Got to drop a track here for my police officers there in the Federation of St. Kitts Navis. I know your guys' hands are full at the moment, but you know, I am in solidarity with you guys all the time. And I just want to drop this track to give you guys an uplift, you know? The King Ranger. Citizen, it is time we break our silence. Help our police. The crime rate is rampant and our children's future is at stake. Protect the people of my land My name is Enforcer of law and order I arrest all kinds of criminals Whether big or small in this nation Job kosher, petty thief or politician Yet you label me a Babylon Some of you go out and call me beast Some shout out get the media police uh. But if I go criminals will take over An innocent citizen here will suffer Night and day you wouldn't they walk the streets Drug pushers will sell their drugs to me Psychopaths will rape and kill the leaf And Villa will become a hell and earth so I'm calling all citizens to come out and lend me a hand To combat crime in this land, we need full cooperation Don't sit there like you don't care and become a victim of fear 
criminal acts, man, you can't condone The life you save, it might be wrong You could help me Help the body Save the country Help the body Get your pushers Help the body And murderers Help the police to maintain Now, before we close out the evening, 
I must say something to you folks online. You know, I believe in being a part of the change. You cannot just speak about things if you're not going to be a part of that change. And I'm gonna call myself to order this evening. And the order I'm gonna call myself to, I am asking you online viewers around the globe, whether you are a resident of Nevis, St. Kitts, national or whatever, or just a listener. I want you to go on the NIA website and find the premier's email address. Copy me on those emails. Let's flood his inbox with messages. We have to stand up for democracy in Nevis. We have to demand that the NIA, that Baby Brantley, ensure there's an opposition office for the NRP, just as it was. You know, as a former delegate for the one of the biggest union here in the New York Tri-State area, many of my cases I won was not about what was even in the contract sometimes, but it was something we call past practice. If something was being done for years, and that is what the people are accustomed to, you cannot just take it away from them. You have to find a way to deal with the matter, but you have to give the people. So the past practice that I'm speaking about is that even though there was one person in the opposition that represent a particular party, in this case, we listen to the premier says that um, it started under Parry and it went on to Cleone. Now, Sister Janice Daniel is there. And for some reason, because of vindictiveness and bad mind, he sees fit that he wants to take that privilege away from NRP. So past practice has been established, right? Past practice has been established that that office was being paid for, for an NRP candidate, whoever that person was in the NIA. Though there might be some unrest with whatever's going on with the two party, the leader of the party is in good standing in the NIA. She's not suspended. She's been supported by the body of the, of the NRP. So I am asking for all your online viewers, share the message, share the information. Let's send emails to that address at the NIA to Premier Brantley and let him know we demand that as of the past practice and what is currently in place that an op opposition office will be paid for is budgeted for in the budget it is in the budget you cannot budget something and just decide you're going to do as you please because you don't like someone you don't own the island. You don't own the taxpayers' money. So we need to send a strong message to Baby Brantley starting tonight. Copy me. My email address is Grant Avenue, G R A N T A V E N U E, the letters D J M, at gmail.com. It's right on the top of my page here. If you go on any of my um, programming, my email address is there. Let's flood that email inbox. And as a matter of fact, I would even advise you to copy the um, AG and those emails because we have to take this thing to the highest level and ensure that democracy is alive and well in our sister island of St. Kitts Nevis, just as we demanded it in St. Kitts, we want to say it in Nevis. And Baby Brantley does not have that right. He's out of hand. He's disrespectful. He's deceitful. 
He have no respect for women. He have no respect for Janice. And he's a divisive piece of tool there. You know, I cannot even, I don't even want to use the words that I need to use to describe his behavior. Because as I said, he's someone that I still have a level of love for. Respect, basically, he forced people to disrespect him because he's a disrespecter, you know? And I'm gonna drop this track here now. I'm gonna drop this track for um, Sister Janice Daniel Hodge because this song was requested some weeks ago by a young man there in the Federation of St. Kitts Navy is a businessman, very intelligent, hardworking gentleman by the name of Adrian Berry. He had requested this song by the young destroyer. And um, it's about strong women. I don't think Baby Brantley can handle strong women. So I'm gonna drop this track for Sister Janice Daniel had this evening. Coming to you, compliments of Adrian Berry by way of DJ Marisha. Rosa Park, like all your struggles gone in vain, cause we gone back to the back of the bus again, especially in the Caribbean, where we boast of black leadership, black people throughout the region, still facing plenty injustice, while the whites and the mother races keep moving on. Keeping black people behind Tourism is women industry But the whites control the top management A signal they send indirectly That black workers incompetent But government still give them work from it So they could keep the top job from us So we're still riding at the back of the bus May your spirit help us Shut the line, shut the line. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. Mama. Rosa Parks. We parents in the Caribbean always succeed. To educate our children, some of us we spend our last penny, even mortgage or property. We'll do anything necessary to send our children to university. But when they return with their degree, to get a job is a different case. Don't care how they qualify, they must settle for second place. We have hotels here in Antigua. Keep insulting black intelligence. The way they importing white labor. In blacks, they don't have no confidence. But government still give them work from it. In their own people, they have no trust. So we still riding at the back of the bus. May your spirit help us. We still riding at the back of the bus. Your favorite game, but it breaks my heart. As a West Indian, I feel so shame. We have plenty uh, qualified coaches, past great players, I must repeat. Instead of utilize our resources, they pack all of them up in the back seat. From Gary Sobers uh, to Viv Richards, some of the best the world ever see. But Rosie, kings have no honor in their country. He was fired after winning the championship in England. Insensitively, they went and hired 
Internet King and a group of Australians. We got the men, so all of us got done it. In local coaches, we have no trust. So we still riding at the back of the bus. May your spirit help us. We still riding at the back of the bus. Yeah, so as I said, folks, we seems to be still in the back of the bus there in Nevis, where we allow one man to destroy our democracy. So I am calling on Sister Janice Daniel, leader of the NRP, to send communication to the federal government, to the prime minister by way of the attorney general, to insist that as per past practice, the NRP is afforded their space, their office space to operate at Nevis. We cannot allow one man to determine the future of all our people. Is nowhere one party will have all of the supporters on any island, but everyone must respect everyone's civil rights and human rights. And I realize that this guy has no respect for anyone. And he tried to keep the narrative to what he wants it to be, and that cannot happen. So Sister Janice, I am appealing to you to get the necessary letter off to the prime minister and to the AG to address that matter of that letter that baby Brantley said that he sent to you. Because keep in mind, Nevis has been subsidized by federal monies and the legislative body of Nevis has a responsibility to answer to the federal government, the federal cabinet. So I would hope that you guys do your due, due diligence by keeping the federal cabinet aware of what is taking place there in Queen City Nevis. So folks, you all cannot um, wait for the folks in Nevis to do it on their own, as we know. It, is, it appears as though that folks are afraid to hit the pavement and demonstrate for their civil rights. We have the medium of social media. Let's get kicking on those emails and flood um, uh, Babies Brantley inbox there at the NIA, that is your email. We cannot stop you from sending an email there. Copy me on that email, copy the AG, copy the prime minister, whoever we have to reach out to, to get this matter resolved. Let's ensure that the, um, that the people of Nevis are properly represented by um the people that they put there to represent them and it's very unfair that baby Bantley is going to report at his press conference i don't know who he was trying to impress but he's basically saying that um his cabinet has decided to stop paying for that office as of april 30. well the office elections finished since the 12th of December. And this office has been paid for from then to now. So why stop paying? Why not turning the office over to the rightful owner? There's an opposition party in power. The NRP has a leader. The leader is in parliament. The leader speak during the um, budget address. So what is the problem? So let's 
get this matter resolved one and once and for all. Once again, to my uncle there, brother Joseph Emmanuel down there, Garvey's estate. Hope all is well with you and stuff there. Folks, don't forget to check Uncle Joseph for weddings or parties, whatever you need. His facility for also there's rooms available. You can hang out shots there, long stay. You want to take pictures, you can just go there and um, let Uncle Joseph know DJ Marish has sent you. You also can log on to my Facebook, to my YouTube, sorry. There is uh, information there. Millhouse Guest House. Check it out. Check my brother there over at the um, Frigate Bay area, the Jam Rock restaurant also. There is an ad on the YouTube there for him. Good lunch, breakfast, and dinner. Not breakfast, lunch and dinner. You can get there, so check him out. Also, Marshalls. Check out Marshalls. Don't forget to check my cousin there, Gloria Hutchinson, down at Smart Fit. Keon Street, right there in the corner of Fourth Street, across from the gas station. And um, her new location is up there at the old Simaco building next to Skelet on Central Street. In the meantime, and between time, we're going to drop the unofficial national anthem as we call it a night. I said no overtime tonight, but Ivor Henry managed to get me into this um, late run. Um, so. Good night, sister Ann Farrell Smith. How are we doing? I want to big up my son there, Jeff Roy Marisha Jr. in the LA area. How is the lady jazz? How is she doing? My sister Esther Hutchinson there in Tartola, the man Mukish and the kids. I want to big up my brother there, the man Shorty, Carl Morris, sister Felicia Morris, the man Avon Brown, Patsy Brown, Ma and Ralph and the crew there, my cousin there, Carolyn Connor, sister Mem, my favorite cousin there in St. Thomas, the man. Craig, how are we doing? Sugars, the man Twinkie, Albert Morris, how are we doing? Sister Patrick Morris, Weezy, Brother Mull, want to touch my cousin there in um, the Virgin Islands, the man Ken Bernier. By the way, um, quick update on my cousin there who had the boating accident a few weeks back. He had several surgeries, as I reported, um, some weeks back in Miami. He's now back in the Virgin Islands. Um, have cast up his limbs, um, going through his necessary um, healing process. We all know that's gonna be a very long road because following those healing process, after taking off those cars, if those limbs heal, you still have to go through uh, rehab to try and get things working again. He would never be a hundred percent, but I just wish him well and hope that um, he make a recovery. I would love to say full recovery, but with the damage that was done, I'll be dreaming only a miracle will give him back a full recovery. As soon as he is well enough and up to it, I'll definitely um, give him an opportunity to come here and um, speak to you guys and thank you all for your support because I know we receive a lot of support from um, everyone. So I want to big up brother Kent Bunny and his wife Pam, Pamela Bunny there in the Virgin Islands. You know, um, like I said at the top of this program, I'm asking you folks who are out there following the smoke screen and the flare of the pictures taken and the dressing and the party and whatever, let the people enjoy themselves and don't, don't, um, don't fall for those things. Let them continue to take their pictures and profile. Let's focus on the big things that is happening in Nevis and what we need to look at. Until such time, I'm going to drop you the national anthem. And uh, don't forget, you know, Ivor was a police back. I knew Ivor in St. Paul's as a, I was a little boy growing up, going to school, going to church. Ivor was a, a police. I had to respect him as a police. You know, I thought Ivor was this tall policeman when I was growing up. It's only now I get to adult stage. I'm almost a foot taller than Ivor, you know. Ivor is a little short, little boy, you know all in age, but short <laughs> in height. So um, I gotta respect my elders still, eh? Enough respect to the man I have. Henry, between him and Vasquez and many of the police Hicks and many of the other police that was stationed there, um, Corporal Joe at the St. Paul's police station, they really shaped me and make sure that I walk the street and narrow. So I wanna big up those policemen there who passed through the St. Paul's area. As a matter of fact, the new commissioner, work in our areas as well. So I'm quite familiar with him. So I really want to 
congratulate him on his elevation. Also, I want to big up um, our um, deputy commissioner, the man Cromwell Henry. I heard that um, he was um, promoted to that uh, position. Cromwell is a hardworking uh, police officer as well. At one point there was kind of concern about him, whether he was compromised by the former hug. But when I look into it and my um, interaction with him, he was very professional about what he was doing. And uh, I guess he just have to um, carry out whatever training they get to be secretive and not um, get caught up in certain things that he have to do his job. But enough respect to the man there, um, Cromwell Henry. Congratulations on your elevation, my brother. In the meantime, my folks, as I always say to you, the song I'm about to play by the late great the King Arrow, this song is called Arise. Very lovely music, but I would ask that you listen to the lyrics and act accordingly. I want to big up my boy there, brother Wayne O'Garro. How are you doing, my brother? I haven't spoken to you in a bit. Hope to see you soon. The man Kibo. How about the man Elvis Williams? The man Glenn Green, the King Monarch. How are you doing? Junior Calypso King, they say what The man EK. How about the man Curtis Cook? My boy there, the man Wabuka. Everything good with you at the tier club. Thanks for the city, my brother. I received the city. And um, my boy there, the big Granny Rascal and Co. The big JL. How about our new Gigi there? This uh, Matt Day, Marcella Leibard. Good evening. Hope all is well with you and the home front and what is happening there in the Federation. Good night to Sister Marsha Henderson. Henderson. The man Samuel Duggins. How about the man Canvas Maynard? Sister Joel Clark. How about the man Nathan Nelson? Dougie. The Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas. How are you doing? And all the cabinet ministers there in the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party. One of the big up sister. Ivan Jeffers there in the UK, um, Sister Sandra, how about Millie, my cousin there, Jerry, Sister Brown, how is Sister Lee Brown doing? Going to drop this track and we're going to make some tracks out of here. The man Ashburn, Ash, Ashburn Leibold, how are you doing? Everything good with you? How is the wife? The summer is about to start. Hope to see you at the cricket field shortly. Don't forget. The funeral of the man, MacArthur Jarvis, is on the 19th of April in St. Croix. The man, Mighty Pat, Jerome Van Der Poel, Eustace Hutchinson, how are you guys? <laughs>
It's nearest. The country is yours, all yours. You cannot tell me you guys are gonna stand by and allow Baby Brantley and his other piglets to mash up Queen City Nevis. You cannot allow three to five of them destroy our little Queen City Nevis. We have to stand up to them and make sure that they do the right thing. We have to pull back our democracy from this brink of destruction. Let's get those email, emails going. Let's get those emails going. Let's reach out to Sister Janice Daniel Hodge, and if she have not done so already, to encourage her and demand that she send a letter to the Prime Minister and the AG to, in, to demand that NRP receive its due which is the opposition office. Don't forget, you know, in the last seven years, under, well, I must say, under the um, former administration in which the PLP with the former hub, the People's Action Movement led by Pam, led by Sean, and Baby Brantley, they denied Dr. Douglas his right to opposition office as well, you know. He had to fight with them to get his allowance for his opposition as well, for his office. They denied the Labour Party that in St. Kitts. Dr. Joe and his team is well aware of these struggles. 
but you cannot wait for Dr. Drew and the Labor Administration to come to Navis to tell you all what to do. You all have to reach across the waters and request the assistance. And if necessary, demand. And I've been saying this for some time. You cannot do it by yourself as a party. Come out from the shadows. Come out from hanging out under your green tent. Come to the public and let the people know what is happening. Request the support of the people to make the change. Basically, you have to put foot, feet on the, on, on the streets. Come on social media. Come on this program. Let the people know what is happening. Ask for the people's help if necessary. The same way you all just take the numbers down to music festival. The same way you all take the numbers down for um, inter-primary school. The same way you all take the numbers down for shopping. The same way you all take the numbers down for juve. The same way you all take the numbers down for parade day. Take the numbers down to Church Street. Take the letter to Church Street and have it hand delivered. Jump on a boat and go down there. You got the Caribbean Express with Mr. Prince Mills. Ask them to transport you. You got Mark Twain. You got Lady B. You got the um, apple cider. You got many ferries that run into Bass there. You got multiple ferries that run over at Reggae, Reggae Beach. You people in Nevis, if you cannot get the result on Nevis, I am advising you all to take the, the march, take the walk down to Church Street. The federal government is located on Church Street. If you cannot get result in Charlestown, take the boots down to Church Street. And I guarantee you, when you take the boots down to Church Street, something will get done. I don't think they want that. I don't think Dr. Joe want that on Church Street. So I am appealing to the NRP supporters. I am appealing to Janice Daniel Hodge with immediate effect. If you're not getting results, at Charlestown, I am encouraging you all. The same effort you all take to go down to St. Kitts to shop and party during Carnival Time and Music Festival, Nevis needs you now. Take the boots down to Church Street. I am here to support you 100%. I am calling on you all to do this. In the meantime and between time, it's about that hour that I must bid you good evening. And I look forward to seeing you folks online again next Wednesday in a different style. And I just want to say, it's love every time. It's always one love with me. One love, one heart, one destiny. <laughs>